Welcome everyone. I'm Sydney. I'm the Communications and Project Officer at ESPD. And together with my colleague Nayara from the projects team, we are going, I'm going to host this workshop. I'll be the moderator. Nayara will note down all the key messages and then tell us, tell us what we've discussed at the end. So as you probably all know, we launched our employment for all awards. The applications, they opened at the end of last year and we had nearly 50 applications. So we had a, a good amount of applications and they were all great, but obviously we had to had to make a, a choice. And yesterday we, um, we said who the winners were and I'm very happy today to have the runner up in the services um, in the services category who will be giving the workshop and telling us all about her practice before we begin i just want to let you know some technical details so in my next slide okay we have um subtitles you have closed captioning today so you can see that you just have to press the closed caption button on the control bar and they should appear and um, please keep your video off and your microphone on mute for the duration of our, of our workshop. You can post questions in the chat box and the, our best practice would be speaking for around 20 minutes and then we'll open the floor and we're going to have a great debate on, on her practice and employment in for persons with disabilities. So you'll have a chance to say everything you want to say after these 20 minutes. And there's a link to our conference app if you want to um, keep up with the updates and see what's going on. So we have Maria from the Aura Foundation with us. Maria? Good morning, everyone. Do you hear me, Sydney? Yes, I see you yeah. and I hear you. I just want to have you on our screen. Ah, okay. Thank you, Sydney. There you are. <laughs> <That's a> great detail. <laughs> okay. Um, sh shall do I have to start? Yeah. Yep. Let's begin. Okay. So, good morning, everyone, and bonjour. And um, first of all, uh, I want I would like to thank ESPD and all the organization for making possible this event. This event, and most mostly now with with the current situation that we are all of us living with COVID situation. So, thank you, Sydney, and all the staff that it's behind this event. Secondly, I would also I would also like to express my thankful to, to Barcelona Council and to and to to Institute Municipal of People with Disabilities and also to all the agencies that take part of this great network. And in the third place, um, I just want to tell you that for us it's been a big honor to be finalists in this award. And I would like to congratulate all the rest of people who were who were in this award. Well, our our presentation today will be about a, a network that was created in Barcelona. And um, I, I am first of all let me introduce myself. My name is Maria Gaudet. I am the director of a, a local foundation called Aura Foundation that attends people with learning disabilities. And we were born 30 years ago, and we use supported employment model. So um, that, that's me. But today I'm not talking about Aura. My, my objective today is talking to you about, we call it in Catalan, it's called Charcha Chip. Um, maybe you can try to say it, but um, because it, I think it's very hard. If, if it's fine for you, I will share a PowerPoint presentation so we all could, could can follow together. And I will try it, Sydney. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's that's the network we would like to present today. And in 2014, and um, um, this network was born. The truth is that here in Spain, we we came from a big crisis, and I don't know if you know, but we we. We, we had some problems in open labor market for people with disabilities. 
And, and we are very glad to live in Barcelona because Barcelona is a real inclusive city and since a long time ago. But in 2014, and the, the Municipal Institute for People with Disabilities and took all the agencies that work in the, in the city for people with disabilities and, and create this network. The, oh, here you can find all the partners or the agencies that are inside the network. And you also have to say that our council had their own department of labor integration for people with disabilities called EAL. I think you can see it here. Yes. And the main objective of this network is joining together all the agencies that work for people with disabilities, but with a, a unique purpose that was to find them a job in the open labor market. As you know, in Spain, um, we have a big tradition in, in integration people with disabilities in ordinary, what we call it ordinary enterprises, but the truth is that transition sometimes for certain workshops or social enterprises to um, open labor market is quite difficult. So for us, it was a great chance to have the support of the, of the Council of Barcelona and to promote this. As you can see, the, the main objective was promoting the inclusion of people with disabilities or, other, or psychological disorders into the ordinary labor market. And what I think it's new is that it was a public-private action. And sometimes we, in here, in, I think in Europe and, and, and maybe in America too, we find that there are many private initiatives. But I think that what the public and um, stakeholders go into, into, this, into this kind of initiatives, then the results are much better, as you can see now. As you can see, the, the last year we were attending almost 2,000 people with disabilities and we, and we could achieve um, 800 new contracts for, for them. And I, I think that you are experts as, as maybe I am. I don't think I am an expert, but I think that um, people who are hearing me now, you are experts, so you know, you know how, how how do we have to work with people with disabilities to achieve our work? First, we, they need train, training a lot, a lot of times. And, but what we think in the network is if one person with disability wants to work in, a, in the open labor market, and we are sure that if we give her or him the support they need, they, they will achieve this goal. So, We've been working together for, for five years. And uh, you, I will say, something here is not translate because it was not easy for me because they are not my graphics, but I will try to, to explain you. As you can see, the, the ones in gray are males, the ones in green are females. And this is the people that we attend all, over these years, so I think as you can see, once again, females have more difficulties to, to, get, to get the support they need. I think something that, that happens all around Europe, not, not only in Barcelona, but who knows, maybe later on you can tell me your, your experience. And in all these years, we have attended 7,887 people with disabilities. I'm sorry. My English is not very good, but I'm trying to, to do it my best. Um, as you can see here, once again, I couldn't translate the graphic, but you can see that the people, that the green ones are the people that are hired, the gray ones are the numbers of contracts, and the yellow ones are the people that we train before they start working in, in the open labor market. As you can see in this graphic, um, it, has, it has gone up and up later, uh, year after year. And finally, we have 6,579 new contracts for people with 
disabilities. I have to tell you, I, I, I'm not sure if I did it at the beginning, I'm sorry. And in this network, um, there are different agencies. Um, I told you about Aura, but there are, for example, people um, like that attend people with physical disabilities or sensory disabilities or um, psychological mental illness things. So what, what we tried to do when this network was born was that nobody um, was excluded because of the disability. Our, our aim once again was if you want to work, we will give you all the support you need to find a, a good job for you. So we start working together in a collaborative work. And the first years I have to tell, yeah, I think yesterday Sydney was asking me, and I think what, what is great about this network is the authenticity that it's behind it. Because when we all start, we, we all knew each other and we really wanted to share our knowledge between us. And everybody was very generous and all of us we were very transparent. And so we start just walking together. Our objectives at the beginning were we need people to be attend and we need enterprises to have a quick answer. So, and that's what, what we tried to do. And last year we create uh, new services that you can see here. I will say it in Catalan because the name is in Catalan. It's called Inclo Futur. And at the end of my presentation, I will give you some details about it because it's, it's a service that all these agencies and the, and the municipal institute um, share. And it's a service just focused for companies. I, I'm, I, I don't know the reality of other cities in Europe, but in Spain, almost all of our um, companies are small or medium. So this service is focused to that kind of companies. And we sign a, 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 a collaborative um, contract with, with an institution of companies and it helps us very much. I will tell you later. So that's it. We start just exchanging our knowledge. Um, we made, we, we share about our methodology. As I told you, in Aura, we use supported deployment, but for sure there were other agencies that were using another kind of methodologies. IPA, IPAs or DIM methodology, for example. So in this year, and um, all of us have learned one from each other. And our focus has always been um, to attend correctly the person with disability. So what we do, and um, the next step was, okay, we, we have shared a lot of knowledge. Now, now we need to train ourselves. And um, once again, we, were, we, we are glad that um, Barcelona Council was behind us because they put every, the, all the resources and they put us um, every single thing very easy to, to share this training, to, to promote the training be, between our, our staffs and so on. And there are some of the, the actions we did with, with, other employee, uh, with other stakeholders. For example, we're, we, are, we are inside the citizen agreement. And um, we have also made a research with, uh, with one university in Barcelona. We are talking very actively with our uh, um, labor department of the Generalitat de Catalunya, who really have the legislative um, power to improve things for the people we are there. And as you can see, and um, in 2017, you can find an um, Inclou Futur, and you can find the covenant with PMEC. And what's PMEC? I think in all the countries you have a PMEC, it's an employer association. And PMEC represents micro, small, and medium sized enterprises in Catalonia. And for us, it was the target that we wanted to go because, as I told you before, almost all of the, of the companies of our country has this kind of size. We don't have huge companies like they have in America, no. And 
and that's it. So now I can share you a video if, if it's fine for you. The, the, the point is that the video is in Catalan and in Spanish, but I can try to translate it or I think that just with images you will have a, an idea about what are we talking about today. Is it okay, Sydney? Okay, I will try. Perfect. One moment. Can you see it? Mm, I cannot see it. I can see the the image, but nothing is playing. Now? Como siempre, arriba puntual. Yes? Is it working? No. For myself, it's not. I don't know if other participants can see the video. Yes. Yes, can you see it? Mm, got some can noise. Hear. Mm. Can hear. Okay, one moment. I, hello, Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> One moment, I will try. Uh, um, here, okay. Now? Is it working? No, not yet. Not yet, no. Not yet, well, I'm sorry. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not very good in that. It's not you, I'm sure it's, I don't know, the connection or something. Hola Maria, ¿por qué no pruebas de, des, des, de, de no compartir pantalla y tornar a hacer el vídeo? Vale. Sí. Nos traemos a todos, sí. Ok, ahora, I will try it again. Ahora. Yes. Great. Sí. Uh, thank you for the help. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, you don't know, but I have many friends now watching. <laughs> I feel so important. <laughs> Okay, I will try it now. Um, okay, com, com sempre, arriba puntual. Avui esperan ganas aquella reunió. S'organitza el dia, accepta amb il·lusió i motivació nous projectes. Moltes empreses com la teva ja ho saben, una discapacitat potencia i altres capacitats. Per treballar amb el millor equip, només cal trobar la persona idònia per al lloc idoni. Per això l'equip expert de la SHIP t'acompanya. Sumem motivació, constància, eficiència, talent i futur. SHIP, xarxa per a la, in la inclusió laboral de Barcelona. Inclou futur. Oh. Ah. Ok. I don't know if somebody has understood a word of that, but I think that images are, are clear and we wanted to tell to the companies, if you want to, 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 have, to, to make this step to, to be an inclusive company, and we have a, a network in Barcelona of professional agencies that can help you to achieve this goal. And I think we did it. So, one moment then. Eh? I will continue. So we, oops, we did this service called Inclow Futur, and we offered different things to the companies. First of all, providing information about architectural, communicative, cognitive, and relational barriers to make companies more accessible. Secondly, adapting the selection processes, taking the different barriers people can find into account. And in the second and the third point, supporting the candidate in their incorporation into the company and through the adaptation process. These actions are directed at people with functional disability, their work colleagues, and the people in the positions of responsibility. So we tried to, to give a, a global answer to the needs that any company any company can, can have. Uh, all the actions are directed at improving the transition to work of people with fu functional diversity and also at companies, guaranteeing that the inclusion processes are viable, sustainable and beneficial for all the parts involved. To this effect, the positive changes brought, brought about by these actions must impact on the person and the family, on their company and on the city, guaranteeing equally equal opportunities, reducing the poverty of the most vulnerable, vulnerable 
survey groups, making companies more inclusive and contributing to create a more accessible city. And um, as you can see, if um, you, you know all of you, I, I don't know the name in English, we say the so, the sustainable development goals. And um, if you if you are a company and you want to achieve these goals or you are interested in changing the world, um, our network helps you. And our city, being an an, an inclusive city, and um, also achieve these goals. And that's it for my part. So, if anybody has any question or whatever, I will be very pleased to try to answer them. Thank you so much, Maria. It was really, really nice seeing, seeing your presentation and seeing an example of a really uh, inspiring and successful uh, practice. So now it's the participants' chance to ask questions, to get um, advice and I don't know, pick Maria's brain to find out how you can implement this, something like this, or find out uh, more about what, what she's saying. So, yep, you can start asking questions and we're gonna have a good debate. So if you want, you can write them in the chat box. We have one Maria from um, Dolores from Ireland. She's asking, was there a positive reaction from the employers? Well, Dolores, the, the truth is that our experience in, in our city is, we, we are very lucky with employers in our city. Um, as I told you, um, labor integration in Spain in the open labor market started um, 30 years ago. And for us, it's not, it's not, it's not very, very difficult to, to have the commitment of the employer. And, but sometimes what is very difficult is, is what they were talking this morning about, that, about this in, 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 the, in the keynotes. Sometimes it's very difficult for, for, the, for the people with disability to, to make the transition between the shelter world to the open labor market. But our experience with companies, we, we have very sensitive companies. We have very we have companies that are commit, committed with the well-being of their staff. And for us, it hasn't we, we didn't find many, many barriers on that. And yes. Can you see them? I'm sorry because I wanted to be a little bit nice and I have I don't have my glasses, but I will <laughs> No, 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 I can tell you. <laughs> no, you have no, a second. No, I'm joking, Cindy, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, yes, we, we find some obstacles in the process, and the, more, the, the main obstacle we find we found is that with PIMEC, with this association of employers, it wasn't easy for us to, to share information. And the, the, the truth is that um, they, they had a very rigid politic of, of protectional data, for sure, as, as we had. So it was difficult to, to find a way to share all those information. Finally, we, we find a, 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 good a good method that um, these associations have different events along the year. So we were invited to these events and we, can, we could explain our experience there. So finally, it, it was easier than what we think at, at the beginning. We have another question. How do families feel about their loved one working in the open labor market? Well, um, wow, I, I never thought about that. And um, because um, usually when the person with disability goes to our agency, it's because this person wants to work in the open labor market. I mean, we, we don't try to, to, to push anybody to go to the open labor market. We only want to help people that really wants to go, we offer them the different supports to, to achieve this goal. So um, when, when they come to us, it's because they, they want to do that. What I think is important is that sometimes um, one person can change of opinion or the needs may change along the line. 
So sometimes people with disabilities can, can be working in the open level market and then they, their need change and they need to go to a shelter workshop for a while. And maybe in another year, he wants to try. But, but you know, Sydney, like me, I mean, I, I haven't worked all my life in the same place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people need changes. And I think that um, uh, all the agencies of the network, what we try to do is to hear what they want and to help them to achieve the, their, their wishes. Mm -hmm. And we have another question. I think it says, it's asking, are the employees' disability benefits reduced when they are employed in the open labor market? No, 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 no in Spain. No. Um, a few years ago, the, the helps were incompatible incompatible do you call it like this yeah incompatible compatible thank you mm -hmm. but nowadays they are not and the, the 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 point is and that's a personal opinion i'm not talking in the name of the network now i am talking as maria Gabriel. i'm sorry but i think that and for sure you have more stability in the shelter workshops and in the protection model you have more mm -hmm. security because you are not in the open labor market, but not more benefits from that. Mm -hmm. Yes, have I answered? I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Dolores agrees. Um, okay. Then another question, have you got the results you expected at the beginning and how do you measure the, res the results and the impacts? Okay, and the truth is at the beginning, we, we, we didn't have very high expectations because we didn't know if, if working together was going to be easy or if it was better to working alone as we, we did it before. So we started with a very low objectives, but on the second year we said, oh, no, 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 we, we, we must double them because, because results were very good. So how, the question was, how, how do we count the impacts? We are, we are looking for number of people who is attend in the in the network, number of new contracts, number of people that is hired, number of people that has done some training with us. And now that we have this new service in Cloud Futur, we are we are counting different impacts as um, how many companies do we visit, how many answers do we have, how many do they open our um, their doors to us or how many of them they close the doors to us and so on this is the kind of impacts we are counting but um, i think that in the next years we will have to try to have a more qualitative evaluation about our work and our, about our effort because sometimes you can see wow too many contracts that's great but you have to our objective is not only that people with disability have a contract in the open labor, in the open labor market. We also want them to have a better life. So I think that's the maximum goal we, we can achieve. And, and I think in the next steps, we, we, we will need to go to a qualitative evaluation in that way. Mm -hmm. I think this goes very nicely with the next question. Where Valentina says that the number of contracts signed is impressive and tells us about the success of the measure. So what about the sustainability of these employment outcomes? What about the quality of the contracts and duration and if you follow up with the people? That's it. For us, it was very important because in Spain we have different, we, we had experiences in, in sharing numbers. No? Oh, 5,000 contracts. And then you, you look a little bit and you say, okay, let's, let's go and see what's behind that. So, because the, the Council of Barcelona was also behind us, and because we were, we were talking very clear with the Catalan government, we were, for example, we, we, if we received uh, an offer of, of job that was, an, for example, that were asking for more than eight hours at, or was not very well paid, or we could find the support of our public departments to help us with that. So they, they would improve the, the conditions. And one of the things we all agree in the network is 
we won't accept this kind of offers and we will um, de denunciar, Sydney. Um, I gotta well, we, will try, we will try to make it them better because they are not fair for the people we are attending. Yeah, to report, to report, not okay. to report again. Thank you, Sydney. <laughs> it took me a while. And that's that's one of the questions. And the other question, um, um, Valentina was asking me. Um, so more of the agencies work with supported employment methodology. And this methodology, as you know, is for all the lifelong of the person we are attending. And um, we've seen that, for example, in our case, in Aura, 85% of the people we are attending and maintains their job after, I don't know, 20 years, for example. So, so for sure, for us, the um, having a job is important, but being able to maintain it and not only maintain the job, also promoting inside the job is also very important and, and it's one of the objectives of the, of the agencies that are in the network. Mm -hmm. And how does it work with the training, to so the training of skills of the, of the employees? That's, well, that, that's, that's, that's particular because every agency has their own way to do it because the needs of the people we are attending are so different. Um, I, I cannot imagine um, helping a person with intellectual disability with the same tools that a person with physical disability needs. So in all the training, each agency has maintained their own methodology and their own way to, to work. And I think that sometimes that's much better when when you are trying to work together, sometimes some parts might maintain their own personality, and that's what this network has has tried to do. Mm -hmm. Great. And what's great about your practice, first of all, is everyone working together, like all these actors working together, which is is really great. And as well, the support that you have for the authorities from the authorities. So. I know it'd be very interesting to hear as well from the participants if they have the same support from from the authorities and if not, uh, Maria, what do you recommend if they if they well, don't? That's one of the things that I, I really appreciate from being here. Thank you, because I think this model is you, you can export it to any city of all around the world. I don't care if it's Europe, Asia, whatever. I think I think it just um it just people together trying to make a city more inclusive and if you have the authority open mind and thinking about the people that lives in the city for sure they will support you so if if some of the cities or are, could be interested i think i think our council could share the experience of the of the shasha chip and maybe and maybe tell them some of the, their colleagues in other countries to establish the, the same experience. Mm -hmm. So that's great. That's Maria and Barcelona offering their support yes. to, to any of, of us that want to. After oh, COVID, I would love to travel again. So if you want, myself can go to convince anyone. <laughs> that's great. That's very generous. So. <laughs> Yep, we have uh, Dolores saying that the wage subsidy scheme is sounds much more impressive in in Barcelona than in Ireland. So that's very interesting. Why? Why is 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 much? I'm not sure. Dolores, I'm sorry. I, I don't understand why in Ireland, why in Spain is better than in Ireland. And Valentina, I'm not sure if that the more local the better. I cannot, I'm not sure, but um, it, it depends of, of every region. But for example, I know in Northern Ireland, in Belfast, they have a similar, a similar network. And I think that some, some cities are well done for that. When, sorry, I have my kids here. <laughs> some, some cities are, are prepared for, for that. 
And, and sometimes, yes, sometimes um, the local, the better. And um, here we are in, a, in an event, um, in an European event, ESPD um, and so on. Um, but now I will talk again as Maria Cabret, not as Chip or whatever, only me. And my experience with supported employment is that we tried to, to achieve many changes, legislative changes and so on in a European level. And after 30 years, I can see that there are so many differences between, between countries. And I'm not sure if, if it's the faster way. I, I'm not, I think we have to be in Europe for sure. And I think we have to think in a global, in a global way. But sometimes to achieve the, the real goal, that is this person needs a work and, and needs a better life, then maybe it's better to, to work in a local level. But that's Maria Cabret opinion and nothing to do with the council and the network and so on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Dolores answered saying that it's higher in Spain and in Ireland it's less, less for employers. It's less for employers. Uh, no, I, I'm not sure the difference about South Ireland and North Ireland, Dolores. I'm, I'm not sure, but, but yes, yes. And um, do you know about other cities in Spain? Because it seems like Barcelona is really supportive and forward thinking, but is this model uh, spread out through other cities in Spain, do you think? I'm, I'm the, I don't think so. Well, mm -hmm. I don't have the knowledge. Maybe there are some cities. Mm -hmm. I, the truth is that I think Barcelona is a, for a long time ago, is a, is a really inclusive city. I think that when, when we hold the Olympic Games, I'm talking to you when I was a, a child, no? But I think we open our mind to understand that all the citizens need a, a, a good place to live. And I think that, that we are a little bit leaders of, of that. And I'm so proud to, to to take part of the city. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, I'm not sure if other cities in Spain are doing the same. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if it's a, obviously you need resources not to start a program like this. Sorry? Resources. So like funding, you think, is yeah. this? Well, um, here in Barcelona, you're asking me? Sorry. It's, it's I'm just like um, noting just things that you would need. So it may be in different areas, it's different how much uh, priority they put because maybe they don't have the resources to start something like this or so, 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 the, oh, always the answer i'm sorry but has to do with money mm -hmm. and that's that's a shame but that's that's a true and i i cannot talk about the reality of of other areas of spain but the truth is Barcel that barcelona is a is a city that that works very well that you know well before COVID now i'm not sure but you we used to have a lot of visitors we used to have um terraces bars and now now i think everything will change but since this year barcelona was a city that that could and um, put money into the well-being of their citizens mm -hmm. and i'm seeing i'm seeing i'm sorry i'm seeing another comment from my friends on the Northern Ireland Union of Support <laughs> and for sure I'm glad to visit Derby again. <laughs> mm. If I can travel. <laughs> Do you have any more questions? Another great part is how all the you have a lot of contacts and all the other organizations that believe in the same thing that you that you do because I remember yesterday when you you explained something that was great that you all have the same idea you all have the same motivation so is this something that other people can do to try and um, encourage others to to join forces networking I think I think that um, it's always important to to work together and and to be generous and, and to want to share knowledge and to share but I think that nowadays it's 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 more important after after COVID. I think our our ways of communicate with each other will change. So I think that all of us will have to make efforts to be strong. And I think that the only way is working together and thinking not only in me, 
thinking in the person I have by my side. So I think some, some things will change and the, the agencies or the people that haven't started to work in a collaborative way, I think that for sure now they will start doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think something that we can start talking about now that's probably on everyone's mind as well is the challenges that you will have now after after COVID, what do you expect? What um, some things that is going to, going to be very difficult? I'm sure many people are going to be going through the same kind of thing. I, I think that here um, we all will have the same problems. And I'm, I'm not sure. How, I, I've seen how different countries are reacting in front of COVID. But here in, in Barcelona, we, people with disability has lost many, many jobs. And you have to think that we've been close at home for more than 50 days. And now we are starting to, to, to have a normal life. But as you can see, I'm here talking to you with two children that you cannot see, but they are here. <laughs> Many things have changed. And in the case of people with disabilities, for them, their the understanding these changes, um, I think it will be very hard. Um, even for me, it's very, very hard if I, if I think in the people I attend, as I told you, people with intellectual disabilities, it must be very, very stressful to understand that. And very stressful to see that you, you were a good worker, but you lost your job. And you were a good citizen, but you must stay inside your home. And I, I don't know, I, I think that for them, understanding this situation will be will be difficult and I think that once again all the people that are here in this event or all the people that really wants to help I think that nowadays the world will we need this kind of people and we will need to help each other and for sure our clients I don't know if you call it clients the, the people we attend yeah. we need a lot of emotional support in in coming back to their works or coming back to to any training or even coming back to, to the metro of Barcelona because everything is a little bit scary for them. So, so yes, Sydney, I think um, we will work in a different way. Um, I'm glad and I'm, I'm happy to tell you that um, a lot of people with disabilities are, are also working from their homes. And in our case in Aura, and people with intellectual disabilities, we have um, 15% of these people that is working from home, which I think that three months ago we would, we would say, no, no, it's impossible. No, mm, that's me. great. And, and we, are, we are making um, online trainings and all, online emotional support, all the agencies of the network, we are doing it online um, 12 hours per day, more or less. So I think people is well attended now, but for sure we will, we will have to think which kind of attention will they need um, after COVID. Mm -hmm. And preparing, well, hopefully not, but probably a, an increase in unemployment numbers. Hmm? That's it. And um, the, the situation in, in our country is a little uncertain nowadays. Um, and I'm sure that the impact that COVID will have in the economy uh, I'm not sure that none of us know how, how will it be. Mm -hmm. and we were talking that um, this network, um, La Charcha Chip, was born in a period that we came from a big crisis, do you remember? But I think that COVID crisis, it's a little bit more scary than that one. And the economic COVID crisis will, will, will let a lot of people suffering, for sure. So once again, we will need public authorities' help. We will need private initiatives to help us too. And we will need to be generous and we will need to focus on our mission. And once again, our mission is trying to, to listen to the voice of the people with disability and find, them, find a job to the open labor market for those who want that and just give them the support they need. Mm -hmm. does that. <laughs> <laughs> and is it ever difficult with private companies? Do you ever have to 
I don't know, really convince them and show them the positive element of having people with disabilities in the workforce? The truth, I, I, maybe I'm not very objective. And maybe if some of, of my colleagues of the network talked, would say, no, it's very hard. And in our case, it's not very hard. In our case, I think that um, behind, beside every company, there's a good person. And I'm, I, I, am, I, I always try to find the, the good part of the person with, with, with you are talking with. And if you really try to let him or her understand the benefits that we have for the company and for the staff and for the people, for the employee with disabilities, to, to make this step, our answer, the answers of our companies are usually affirmative. So, so yes, it's not very difficult. I think that what is more difficult in Spain, as I told you before, is the bureaucracy of the system that we have. And that for the person with disability, it's not very easy. But for the company, to convince the company is not a huge problem. But I'm sure you have to offer support not to some companies that maybe never have had a, a personal disability in, in their workforce and they obviously they have to make some adaptations. Oh, in sure. the... we, we start, even, so there are some companies, for example, that they ask for us, like, before hiring the person, I need you to come and to explain to the rest of the staff and mm -hmm. some no, sensibilization, do you call it? I, I don't know, but makes, yeah. And, and for sure, uh, our objective is, is that it must be an easy step for the company and for everybody. So for sure, there's also very important the accessible bar and in physical or sensory disabilities, you know it, and intellectual disabilities, we need, and cognitive accessibility for, for the document and so on. But for, it, it, do, it doesn't have to be an effort for the company because the agencies, we are the experts on this kind of tools and we, and we provide the companies the solutions to that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Does anyone have any more questions? Anyone wants to tell us how it is in their country? If they have the same support or if they have the same uh, willingness from, the, from businesses? Or if uh, Maria, you want to tell us maybe the the top things or the key things that people should take in account or things to remember, like your top. Uh... For me, the, the the key point, but once again, it's a I think it's a philosophy of life. For me, it's it's to be honest, to be transparent, to be generous, and to be focused on the same mission. If you share the mission, then everything should be very easy mm -hmm. it's it's i think that it's more simple than what it seems i, I think and yeah know. i agree <laughs> yes yes and oh, man, once again um, if you have a good and um, public authority that really trusts in your mission as you do then everything is much much easier Mm. That, that's that's a fact <laughs> and if they don't if they don't you have to be a little bit um, and persistent do you call mm -hmm. yep okay. so persistent always with a smile but persistent and someday you'll you'll get it for sure mm -hmm. that's great advice <laughs> <laughs> okay um then if anyone has any doesn't have any other questions i don't have a a comment. Yeah. Northern Ireland again. <laughs> yes, for sure. They, they have small and medium companies as us. Mm -hmm. um, the working company. That's it. I, I'm not sure why, but our experience is that getting into big companies, it's sometimes more difficult than going to the shop you have in the street across the I I'm not sure about why what's the reason behind that but uh, for example we, we also always think for example and um, maria me i'm a person with a disability and i want to work in a supermarket so my agency the first thing 
we do is to find supermarkets close to your home, no? To make it easier for you. And the answers are very good. But if you want to go to a... I, I cannot tell uh, brands of companies, but can you imagine huge companies uh, that we all know? And then there is very difficult to find the way to enter to the correct person. I, I agree with, with Northern Ireland Union of Support and Employment of that. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca says that they don't have very optimistic dates. There are a lot of disabled people without work because of COVID. Yes. And then the little and the medium companies in Spain are suffering a lot. Um, you are totally right, Rebecca. Um, I think there is a before and an after COVID. Yeah. I think that COVID will change, COVID will change many, many things. And we will have many people that, that will lose their job. Maybe, maybe, maybe myself, I, I don't know, or maybe my husband or, and for sure, and for sure people with disabilities won't be the exception of that. And um, in Barcelona, we are, we are very worried on, on this situation because as I told you before, um, we are now counting how many people of the network it has really lost their job. Some of them in, in Spain, we call ERTE, it's a temporary stop of the job, but we think they will get it again when everything opens. But some of them, we know that they, they are, have really lost, lost it. So yeah, Rebecca, I'm, I, I'm, maybe I am, I am too much optimistic, but I think it has nothing to do with the network. It has, it has to do with myself and with Maria. I, I am an optimistic person. I think that COVID will, will be very hard and we will suffer a lot. But I also think that, that the best part of each one of us will go out. And that's a unique way to, to, to I don't know how to say that, but to... To carry on, to... <laughs> That's it, to overcome, up. overcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, it's very disappointing, obviously, to see about the big companies because, isn't it by law, aren't they required to have a percentage of their workforce? Yes, but that's it. That's for big companies. Yeah. Have a law that companies that have more than uh, 50 employers need two percent of them to be with us in disability. But that's it. Big companies are not our best target. Okay. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Maybe after COVID, things will change. I'm. I don't know. The truth is that having this legislation has has helped a lot. But now, now that we are in a European uh, forum, and this legis this legislation have more than forty years, and I think that maybe in Europe we could think in a modern, flexible, and human being legislation for, for, for the road to employment for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as well a comment from someone that your network that you've created is a helpful structure for them, especially during this crisis. What, I know Kirsten, but Kirsten, hi. But I don't understand. I suppose that you play network is a helpful researcher. Yes, it is. It is. And um, we are helping all the agencies. We are helping each other. And once again, I, I think it's like publicity, but I promise it's not. We must be very thankful to our council because even in, in, this, in this moment, the other day we had a meeting with them. And for example, they asked, um, do you need protection for all the people you are attending, like masks, and we can help you with that. And um, you have people that don't have um, computers at home, so they, they get very isolated on everything. And the council told, told us, just give, give a list of the necessities, of the needs you have, and we will try to help you. So, so yes, Kirsten, once again, um, having a strong network and behind in a moment like this, is is great.
It's like having a, a good family or having a good friend or having a, it's, it's very different um, living this situation with more people than living it alone, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But I'm lucky, I, I live it with a lot of people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an important, important point. There's always strength in numbers, so it's important to, yeah, to have everyone together and work together. More people, the better. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, if anyone doesn't have any more questions, maybe we can pass on to Nayara to see what she's, the key messages that she's got from this, from this uh, workshop. Come on. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I'm Nayara, and first of all, I would like to thank the speaker Maria Cabre for the, her very interesting presentation uh, to all the participants for being part of this workshop. Now, the key messages that I would like to highlight is that the people with disabilities can work in ordinary companies. It's not just about having the right to, to work. The work has to meet the, the wishes of people with disabilities and make them feel realized. And the importance of improving the transition to work and guarantee that the inclusion process are viable, sustainable, and beneficial for all the parties involved. And that the model of integration that has been developed in, in Barcelona, it could be easy to copy to other countries and be able to make a city more inclusive. And I would like to finish with a sentence that uh, we have seen in the video. A disability empowers other abilities. Thanks. Wow. Thank you, Nayara. Next time, I think you must present with me. <laughs> that was great, Nayara. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you too. So yeah, I'd like to close this workshop then. Thank you so much. Thank you to Maria. You've been great. You've been really inspirational. And I'm sure lots of people have learned a lot of things. And as well, maybe you might get some people contacting you after this workshop to, to find out more and find out how you can work with you. And thank you so much. I hope it's been really useful and that you've enjoyed our conference. So hope we can work together sometime soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>